Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 28th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Latest diary today from Wee Ching, uh, who resides in Singapore. So he uh, took a quick look at uh, phishing scams that he sees in Singapore. And of course, well, the patterns match pretty much what everybody else is seeing. This phishing cam sort of tries to impersonate Singapore Post instead of some of the other global shipping companies that are often impersonated in these scams. The makeup of the email, very similar to what you are are typically seeing. A little bit sad that the images are still hosted for these phishing scams on the respective company's original servers. This should be detectable and should also be an easy countermeasure against phishing, which has already been pointed out for many years. But talking about scam victims, the UK consumer organization, which has taken a look into the statistics around some of the recent scams. And well, uh, sadly, many of the victims actually were scammed after clicking on an ad. So malicious ads, still a big problem. With that also uh, the problem in reporting these malicious ads in case a victim actually recognizes that they just clicked on something malicious. First of all, well, and I've experienced this myself, it can be quite time consuming to actually report these malicious ads. It's not often clear how to report them in the first place. And then of course, there's always the question how much good it does if there's actually some kind of follow up on these reports. And even if a particular ad is removed or a site is no longer being linked to by an advertisement, it's often replaced by a very similar site very quickly. And there appears to be very little sort of control around this at various ad platforms, which I guess uh, comes back to the old recommendation, use an ad blocker in order to protect yourself, not just from ads themselves, but also in particular from the malicious effects of ads that are commonly being displayed. And Microsoft Defender is now taking advantage of Intel's threat detection technology in order to block uh, crypto jacking. Crypto jacking, the deployment of unwanted uh, crypto coin miners on systems, of course, is still a big threat and something deployed very commonly given, of course, also uh, the rise in crypto coin prices. And Intel's threat detection technology is actually a feature in a recent Intel processors. So by leveraging this feature, it's easier for a Microsoft Defender to detect behavior associated with crypto jacking. Have to see how well this really works. And of course, it only works if you are running an Intel processor that is equipped with this technology. And Cisco's Talos research team disclosed details regarding a vulnerability in the PROC PID syscall file that you commonly find on Linux. Uh, This vulnerability could be used uh, to read arbitrary kernel memory. The memory can only be read, it cannot be altered, but of course the information could then be used uh, to further escalate privileges or it could aid in the exploitation of additional uh, vulnerabilities. So not a huge vulnerability, but something that should certainly be addressed. The issue was originally reported in November, patched in February, and now Cisco made the details public. So patches should already uh, be out there. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.